Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This one is going to be on an extremely important topic that is very underappreciated by new investors, asset correlations. You may have noticed that when the market crashes, prices of stocks take a tumble. However, some stocks are more sensitive to the market than others. Similarly, not all asset classes respond to the market in the same way. Bonds do not respond to downturns in the market in the same way because they are generally viewed as safer assets Gold does not behave in the same way as stocks as it is viewed as a store of value, even though gold by itself does not generate any future returns in the form of dividends, for example. The key point to notice is that assets are fundamentally correlated in terms of their price and returns. And the reality is, all of these financial assets in the traditional markets are fundamentally correlated. We saw that in 2007. Everything broke down. Things that we thought were hedges went away. And so I think it's really important to not forget what happened there. So in 2018 or 19, heaven forbid we go through another cataclysmic financial event, we are going to see the same fundamental correlation. And so again, I ask, why would it not make sense to have a non-correlated hedge? In this video, we are going to learn how to quantitatively think about asset correlations using the example of a few representative ETFs and stocks. Now, I often hear from conservative investors that they are too hesitant to invest because they just don't like to lose money. If you are such an investor, this video is for you. If you are a more risk-tolerant investor, this video is also for you because you can learn how to make a more balanced portfolio. I will show you the tools and the concepts you need to do your own research to make a portfolio that could have a strong upside performance while minimizing the downside risk. Stay tuned until the end of the video where we get to quantitatively find investments that are less sensitive to downturns in the market than the overall market itself. So let's begin. The first concept we need to understand is the correlation coefficient, which is a number between negative 1 and 1. Let's think of two stocks, Apple and Microsoft. If Apple stock goes up by $10 and Microsoft goes up by $10 also, then we would say that the two stocks are positively correlated, with a value of the correlation coefficient being somewhere between 0 and 1. If Apple goes up but Microsoft doesn't, then we could say that two stocks are uncorrelated with a correlation coefficient around zero. And if Apple goes up but Microsoft goes down instead, then the two stocks are negatively correlated and the value of the correlation coefficient will be somewhere between zero and negative one. Here is a more detailed explanation. We are going to plot the behavior of asset A with respect to asset B. These could be stocks, bonds, ETFs, gold, etc. If the price change in one of the assets is completely mirrored by the price change of another one in the same direction, then the two assets are perfectly correlated with the correlation coefficient being exactly 1. However, this perfect correlation rarely happens, and usually there is a lot of scatter as shown in the second example. The scatter makes the correlation coefficient a positive number between 0 and 1. If the price of one asset goes up while the other one goes down, as is the case in the third example, then the assets are negatively correlated with a value of the correlation coefficients being somewhere between 0 and negative 1. And lastly, in the fourth example, if the price of one goes up and the other one does not respond in kind or responds very weakly, then the correlation is very close to zero. Now you may be wondering, how would I ever be able to calculate this for any stock or ETF I'm interested in? Fortunately, all of the work is already done out there for you. I found this great website tool, which is linked in the descriptions below, that gives you the chance to see correlations between any security that you are interested in. Simply type in the ticker symbol separated by a comma and you can find out the correlation between the two assets. Now I've gone ahead and calculated some of the correlation coefficients for the example ETFs and stocks that we will be looking at today. And those are listed up here. Our basis of comparison is going to be VOO which is Vanguard's S&P 500 index. We are going to be looking at VGT, which is Vanguard's Information Technology ETF, VHT, which is Vanguard's Healthcare ETF, VIG, which is Vanguard's Dividend Appreciation ETF, VPU, which is Vanguard's Public Utilities ETF, and then we are going to look at four different stocks, Walmart, Johnson Johnson, Beckton Dickinson, which is also a large medical devices company, Apple, and then we are going to look at two bonds and one gold ETF. The two bonds we are looking at are Vanguard's short-term bond ETF and Vanguard's total market bond ETF. And lastly, 
we are going to compare the performance of GLD, which is an ETF that tracks the price of gold. The start date and the end date that I gave here correspond to when VOO was first launched to the most recent trading day before this video was recorded. And we are going to be looking at the daily returns from a correlation basis. So if we scroll down, we find the entire table of results. And the column that we are most interested in is right here. This column lists the correlation coefficient for each of the securities that we listed above. And here are the results. We will be reading down the VOO column because that is our basis of comparison. Among the four ETFs of VGT, VHT, VIG, and VPU, VPU is the least correlated to the broader market. Now, I have a much more detailed video of comparing ETFs, which I highly recommend if you are enjoying this video so far, and I will link it in the descriptions below. Among the four stocks I chose, they all have a relatively weak correlation to the market, with Walmart being the least correlated. Then we have the two bond ETFs, Vanguard's short-term bond ETF and Vanguard's total bond market ETF, which both have a negative correlation to the market. This means that these tend to slightly do the opposite of what the market is doing, meaning if the market goes down, then they tend to go up slightly on average. Lastly, we have GLD, which tracks the price of gold. And you see that GLD has an almost zero correlation to the market. This is why it is recommended to hold a little bit of gold in any portfolio because it is uncorrelated to the broader market. A few key insights to note here for the safe investor looking at this. You may want to be exposed to VPU as it is a diversified ETF with a dividend and it is not totally correlated to the market. From a stock perspective, Walmart is a great example of something safe to own. But all four of these stocks tend to do relatively well during the downturns. Of course, bonds are a good way to receive some small returns while nearly minimizing all downside risk. In fact, bonds may even go up slightly when the market is going down. And gold is a good way to fight both market volatility and inflationary threats as it is seen as a store of value. Now, during inflation, the first thing you want to do is stay invested in safe and good assets. When prices rise, asset prices do so as well, and the worst thing you could do is hold on to cash at that point. Having some gold, or even a small amount of cryptocurrency, could be a hedge against inflation. Using what you have learned so far, you could come up with a safe portfolio that fits your needs. Now comes for an important part of this video. The correlation coefficients we saw so far were for all trading days, regardless of whether the market was up or down. I wanted to specifically look at how these assets performed when the market was going down only. To do that, we have to switch over to Python to calculate the correlations for the market only on its way down. Okay, now we are in Python where we are going to look at the correlation of the assets we looked at earlier, but only as the market is going down to see how historically sensitive each one of these securities has been to market downturns. Now I'm going to be using the Y Finance package that I have shown in previous videos and you can check that out if you would like to learn how to do this calculation yourself. Here are the securities that we have already looked at previously and what we are going to do next is calculate the closing price of each one of these over the same start date and end date that we looked at earlier. Again, if you would really like to learn how to do these calculations yourself in Python, please check out my video on Y Finance package. Next, what we have to do is calculate the difference in prices of these ETFs from day to day. And this is actually an important step because you can't just look at price correlations because prices generally tend to go up. So everything in the market over long periods of time will show a positive correlation. It is more useful to look at the difference in prices from day to day as different assets either go up or down. So this diff function, what it does is it takes the price today relative to the price yesterday. And if the price went down, this number will be negative. And if the price went up, this number would be positive. Next, we can use simply this correlation function to calculate the correlation coefficients and just simply print that out. So let's see what that looks like. And here are the results. VOO has, of course, a correlation of one with itself. And the rest of these numbers actually match up really nicely with the numbers that we have found before. 
So this is a very good sanity check for us, because again, we find that only the two bond ETFs have a negative correlation to the overall market, represented by VOO, and gold has a very small correlation to the market overall. Whereas VIG and VGT both have strong correlations with the market. So now the question is, how do we look at these numbers only when the market is going down? And that is actually quite simple to do. What we can do is filter the data frame by looking at days only when the overall market represented by VOO returned a negative value. And all this means is that the market today went down relative to yesterday. And this essentially filters out all of the trading days by only the down days. So let's go ahead and find out what this correlation of these ETFs with the market going down really is. And here are the results. What you will notice is that the numbers are in general very similar to what we saw before. That is VGT and VIG both have a very strong correlation with the market going down, whereas VPU has a relatively small correlation on the way down. Again, the outstanding stocks in this arena appear to be the two healthcare stocks, J&J &J and Beckton Dickinson, and Walmart, which has a very low correlation with the market as it goes down. Again, we find that our bond ETFs and our gold ETF perform really well. So if I were to optimize my portfolio for risk while preserving some good future returns, I would consider these four options very strongly because of their stability, low downside risk, and the dividend that they provide. From a safety point of view, I would certainly keep BSV, BND, and GLD in mind to further reduce the downside risk relative to the overall market represented by VOO. I hope you found this video very helpful and that it has given you the right mindset in terms of thinking about correlations when picking ETFs, stocks, or bonds for a diversified portfolio. If you found any of the content in this video to be useful, please consider dropping a like or subscribing to the channel to help it out in the future. Thank you and I'll see you guys in the next video.